Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is on Nigeria's readiness for a global energy transition by 2025, by 2050, or any year you know, in the, in the near future. We're speaking this morning with um, an investment manager at uh, All Partnerships for Energy Access, Mr. Afolabi Akinrogunde. Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. All right. Um, Every now and then we hear about, you know, Nigeria attending conferences and, um, you know, being a part of agreements, uh, you know, Millennium Development Goals, COP21 and COP26 and the likes. Um, you know, and, you know, I'm sure a little bit, you know, a part of us, you know, would always question, you know, what, you know, relevance we actually offer to these conferences, seeing where we are as a country. Um so we will get into talking about whether we truly are ready. We will be, are we going to be ready in the next 10 years even? And will the world leave Nigeria behind with regards to energy? Uh, but before that, help us understand what exactly a global energy transition is. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that's the starting point. The energy transition essentially um, refers to the global energy sector shift from a fossil fuel uh, based um, system of energy production and consumption, i.e. you are producing gas, you are producing oil, you are producing coal, things of that sort, to a, a renewable energy uh, based um, system, which is more things like hydro, wind, solar, and what have you. So from what I've just said, it's clear that countries like Nigeria, who, which are, which are for, for example, in terms of revenue generation, depend a lot on oil and gas, in terms of also of of, of, um, of um, power power consumption, also also consume a lot of oil and natural uh, oil oil based products, um, use and also natural gas used primarily as a source of, um, of power generation. Uh, it, it's clear that uh, this transition is going to have um, implications for Nigeria. Okay, so um, let's also you know begin to look at whether or not you know as a country. We should be talking about being part of, you know, the global energy transition. Now, first of all, you would want to agree with me that, you know, in terms of consumption, electricity consumption, I mean, we're still a developing nation. And um, uh, talking about the fact that, you know, countries of the world are now saying, yes, we are moving away and we're looking at very, you know, clean energy come 2050. But if you want to juxtapose, you know, countries, I mean, if you want to begin to compare uh, the emission that countries like the United Nations, uh, I mean, the United States with about 15.5%, if I'm not mistaken, gas emission into the environment and comparing with what Nigeria is actually emitting. Do you think that, um, you know, it's fair enough that we should be having this argument? Because, I mean, entire continent, the sub-Saharan Africa, we're looking at 0.6%. Uh, so, do you think that, you know, it's fair for us to, you know, to be part of uh, this kind of conversation? Yes, I think the, the key thing is that this is a global energy transition. So, it's actually the whole world that is moving along, 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 so, uh, along this route. And the key thing is going to be that these are the countries also which are consuming our oil. These are the countries which are consuming our natural gas. These are the countries which are generating a lot of the industrial industrial in, in, in the industrial products which we also consume at Nigeria. So the global the, the, the global environment is um, is interconnected. So 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 we cannot more or less as Nigeria or as Africa say that we are not going to, to be part of this. We sell we sell our products for 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 we sell our oil and natural gas for 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 USD. We bring in cars into Nigeria. So whether we like it or not, we are part of the global of the global environment, of course, we can continue to to see how we can channel that discussion, how we can maneuver as a country to ensure that our own national interest as protected as um, as much as is possible, or that we are as nimble as a country as is possible to see where the rest of the world is going, and then of course do what needs to be done as a country to ensure that we are not left behind. But to say that oh, we are not going to be part of this, we are not. It's no. not, it's not, a, it, yeah, it's not possible. Okay, I'm coming from the premise that if you look at, you want to talk about equity now and unfairness, of course, you also want to talk about inclusiveness. I'm saying if you look at these countries, I mean, developed countries, 
they emit most of you know these gases that are polluting the environment i mean comparing to i mean if you want to compare that to uh, africa or sub-saharan africa or even nigeria we're not even emitting as much as they are emitting and so in terms of the percentage because we also have a situation where there would be compulsory 40 percent and then you know 25 percent you know without any condition so i'm asking is that fair enough or should we be looking at negotiating you know for lesser uh, reduction yeah i think i think the declared thing is going to be that this is where the whole world is going and nigeria as an entity given where we are we have very very little little we go as a country where we we, 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 we we do not have the negotiation power as, as much as it's possible to say okay we're not going to do this excuse me we are not a china um, and we cannot go back and say, no, in the in the real politics, in the global stage, this is not fair, it's not an argument. That to sit down sit down and say, what is my own interest here? Where is the where where is the put going? Where is the ball going? How do I make sure that by the time the ball gets to that point, I as a country am ready? Of course, I can say, sit down and fight for one or two things for myself to ensure that this works. But at the end of the day, you know, as I said, the global energy transition is also not coming coming up as a result of those people just say, okay, this is going to be better. There are things which are happening in our environment, global, 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 global climate change, which is affecting everywhere. If you look at the coastlines in Nigeria, if you look at, at the Sahara, if you look at part, the various parts of the world, the seasons are changing, the environment is changing, global temperature is rising up. So it's affecting everybody, whether you are in Nigeria or you are in Siberia. So the key thing really, at the end of the day, is for us to, to actually sit down and say, this is where the world is going. This is where the people who are buying my oil, this is where the people who are buying my gas, this is where they're going to be getting their energy from in the next 20, 25, 30 years. What do I need, need to do as a country to sit down now, have a plan, I'll work that plan. But to sit down and say, oh, it's not fair, it's not fair. That's not how the world works. You know, the world doesn't work like that. The, the, the no. world basically works in terms of what is what is urgent and what is in people's interest. And I okay. do have to, have to sit, sit up and start doing that. Yeah, um, um, Mr. Uh, Akin Rogunde, the, what should be the biggest motivation for uh, Nigeria, the giant of Africa? Should it be the economic concerns, you know, seeing that we've not been able to diversify our economy um, enough you know, so that, of course, uh, when we lose out on oil sales in the near future, we can still survive? Should that be the biggest concern or should it be climate change? Because we aren't having a very, very broad conversation with regards to the effect of climate change in Africa. Uh, you know, just pretty much the same thing we're doing with COVID-19. You know, everyone's acting like it's not really affecting us, it's not really our business. So, so what would you say that in the next, let's give it 20 years, should be Nigeria's biggest concern and motivation to join in with the global energy transition, um, the economic concerns or the climate concerns? I think the, the, the key thing to do right now is to more or less do, do two things. Number one, decide to decide to pivot to gas, which is something which Nigeria is already looking at, because I think gas is going to have a longer shelf life, so to speak, compared to, to where oil is. Gas is still going to be around a lot longer than that, a bit longer, not a bit longer than oil is going to be. So, so I think that pivot to gas is critical, which is why you see, for example, for more than 15 years, we'll be looking at how to get um, an LNG train seven gun. That is one thing that, that the government has realized. They've, they've allowed the FID final investment decision on that project to, to get along. So we can see um, some, some, some evidence that, that the government is realizing that, yes, we need to pay more to gas because a lot of the energy that has, been, that has been generated in the world today is based on gas because gas um, is, the, is, the, is the cleanest of the dirty world. So, so, so you, you can say that gas Gas is something that we, we can still use. Then the second thing is, is, is to then sit down and look at our power sector. What can we do to, to, number one, optimize on the gas we have? Because Nigeria has decided that even though we have a, a target of 2060 as a country to achieve our own net zero target, which is just under 40 years from now, what can we do as a country to actually sit down and say, okay, our gas, our gas, let's optimize this gas now while we can. And then let's also redesign our power delivery and energy utilization systems to enable us to maximize on, on, on our own resources within the, the window that we have as a country. So this redesigning means that we have to sit down from having a centralized grid. How can we put in renewable energy into our system? How can we make it a lot more robust so that if something happens 
at, um, at one part of the grid, the whole grid doesn't shut down, so that we don't have only one source of supply. Many of the countries that have energy security today in the world have different sources of supply, different sources of energy of energy production. So those are the kind of things that we have, that we have to, to look at as a country. We have to look at number one, transiting as much as possible into a gas-based economy for the for the, for the short and medium term, and of course number two also as, as in, in terms of how we generate our own power, optimize on that gas quickly because very much for what you know. 20, 25, 30 years from now, what the world is doing in terms of what it's doing to coal can start becoming can start becoming the same thing that's going to happen to gas. So we don't have all day, we don't have the whole world. Otherwise, we will find out that we have all this gas, we have all this oil, and nobody wants it. So, so I think I think we have like a 20, 25-year window during which we need to get things going. And I think we need to see it, a sense of urgency from the people in governance. Because if you think yep. we have problems today, yep. by but the time this change occurs, it will be a lot, more, a lot more difficult. Yeah, Mr. Akinrodo, what, what I'm asking is what should be our biggest motivation for this uh, process and for to take these steps? Is it, you know, economical? Um, are we going to be looking mostly at how Nigeria as a country will suffer if the world moves away from fossil fuels? Or are we going to be looking more of you know at the, the climate aspect of it, you know, and how of course we yeah, will yeah. be we will be affected? You can never do anything in one way. You have to look at the two. You have to combine. You have to you have to combine both your climate concerns with your with your economic concerns. So that is the way countries are run. You have to look at. You have to manage. Like every other country, manage your economy, manage education, manage healthcare. So, so it's not looking at you have to leave one and leave the other. They are both important. But of course, the key, the biggest challenge we have in Africa is that you know, the, the, the African or the Nigerian is, is, is poor. So I have to eat today before I think of the economy or of the climate in two years or three years or five years' time. But you as a leader of a country, you are the one who knows that, yes, in 10 years, 20 years, they have, even though the average Nigerian may not have that, is thinking of, well, how do I get you know, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 to each today or this week? You are the one who has to sit down and balance all these, all these urgencies to ensure that at least, even though, yes, I manage my climate issues today, I still ensure that this economy continues running because even if you have a good climate and everything is going, if all of you are hungry and there's no fuel and there's no power, you are still in trouble. So, so, so it's basically an issue of balancing. So, right. um, so how do what do we now do? Because I mean, it's very scary. As much as we will be thinking that 2050 is far from us, uh, this is 2022 already, and before we could know it, we're already in 20, you know, 50. So the point now is, if if you look at us already, you agree that we're totally dependent on, you know, the oil sector, the crude for all of our earnings, and that also is responsible for, you know, funding of our budget and what have you. So if the um, usefulness of fossil fuel would you diminish at a time, what becomes of the Nigerian economy, and what drastic steps can we start taking now to ensure that you know we move away from the dependency? of one sector of the economy, that's the oil economy. Yeah, so, so the key things again with me, number one, to realize that you, you, that you have an emergency. Um, I don't, I don't I not play the, the political games of kicking the can down the road. Let me, let me shift this problem for another four, five, eight years. Let, let, let the next government think about it. Believe that we have as a country a national emergency and then start changing our behavior in a way that shows that we're actually responding, actively responding to, to that emergency. How do we then decide to say, okay, how, how do we then activate all the other elements of our eco ecosystem in Nigeria to actually encourage, for example, the youth, for example, we, we find out that Nollywood, what we're having in FinTech, all of the things that have generated FGI into Nigeria in the last two, three years have got very little to do with the federal government. So these are the things that we have to encourage. How do we, for example, make our economy a service-based economy? All of the things which are happening in various other parts of the world, uh, where, for example, India is used, is used more or less as a, as a great center where for, 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 for the service economy, i.e., of center and what have you. What, what we have, we have a host of graduates, of, of unemployed graduates, of rich people in Nigeria, of rich um, labor in Nigeria that, that, can be that, that can be channeled. So it's not going to be to tell everybody to start carrying home and going into, into, into agriculture. But how can you then diversify your economy? And it's not necessarily diversify by, by spending money. It's actually diversific that diversification also by ensuring that you, are, that, that you show people that you are serious. That you show people that the rule of law counts in Nigeria. That you show people that um, that things matter in this country, and you enable the changes that need to be. Well, people that want to make changes, let them make those changes. Don't say that this is going to be 
against the, the, the status quo. And then sit down and then reorganize the entire power sector. Reorganize it, we'll ensure that what you get the best you can get from the gas while the going is still good. Get the best you can get from your oil, get the best you can get from your gas. Diversi use that money to diversify into the, the, the rest of the economy. I believe Nigeria has another 20, 30 years max for doing which we need to do what needs to be done. Uh, already, as we've seen in many parts of the world, banks in, the, banks in, in Europe, some banks in America are finding it very difficult to actually fund oil and gas projects. So, so it's something that is already happening to us as, uh, as, a, as a country. So, so it's going to be, we need to get with that program, enable, unleash the, the potential of the Nigerian, of the, of the dead capital that is left in Nigeria. For example, using your land as loan is difficult, getting gold. So there are a lot of other things that we need to do. It's not just sitting down and say, oh, whoa, um, how can we diversify? There are things that government needs to do just by way of policy, by, by way of, of the way things are done that can unleash um, a lot of economic activity in Nigeria. So I think that that, all, that is way, way outside of the mandate of this um, discussion, but it's something which, which we, we, need, we need to see as a country until we have an emergency in other 30, 40, 50, 60 years, we will have all this oil, all this gas, and nobody's going to come for it. They will say, go and eat your oil, go and eat your gas. So what are we going to do? But if, I, if we don't have that sense of urgency, if we don't sit down and say, what do we need to do? Where are the other areas? Which, which parts of the economy are going? You know, we have Bonner Boy, we have people, we have the entertainment sector, we have music sector, Nigerians are winning awards. We have billion, billion dollar um, 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 uh, co co companies in Nigeria started by on, under 30, under 40 youths. How do we encourage all of that to ensure that Nigeria continues to become an attractive center for both investment and also for the unleashing of the potential of Nigeria? And I think that is what we need to do. The way we have been doing it for the last six years is not working. We need to change our ways and we need to look at how to, how to get things done better. Uh, what, what would it take uh, for us to become more serious? about conversations like this, about supporting some of the things that you've mentioned, the information technology sector, the entertainment sector, uh, the tourism sector, and some of all of that. Um, what will it yeah. take? Will it take a, a government that understands these things, or will it take a, you know, a situation where, of course, we always you know, have knee-jerk reactions from the Nigerian government. They never actually mm -hmm. act, take action and, and plan ahead. We hear every now and then of a five-year developmental plan, 10-year developmental plan, but all of that never really comes into play. Um, so will it take a different set of leaders entirely to put Nigeria on that path um, or something else? I think the key thing we will need right now is creativity. We need to have, we, need, we just need creativity. We need to sit down and find the people who can actually make, the, who can actually, who can actually, who can actually facilitate the growth of, of, of this country in the manner that needs, that it needs to do. To go through, it's not going to be something. I cannot sit down here and tell you that yes, of course, there'll be one or two things. The the, the PIB, which has been more or less in in uh, in in working for the last um, 20 or so years, has been passed. Even what and all, despite all the all the challenges we we did, that has been passed into law. We've seen NLNG 27. We've seen a few things, but in terms of the overall overhauling of this country, I think the government needs to sit down and have a sense of urgency. If if you, are, if you don't have that sense of urgency. And you just sit down and say, okay, nothing looks like it's changing. You know, it's like it's like a fog in boiling water. If you put put that fog in boiling water, the, the temperature is slowly changing around you, and that fog is boiling. But because the temperature doesn't change immediately, you think everything is okay. By the time you notice that the temperature has changed, it's too late for you. So I think we need to sit down as a country, especially at our leadership level, and decide. It doesn't have to be when you are now making a trend of what you are making it. In 2050, in 20, in 20, in 2045, you are making a tenth of what you were making in 2021. You now find out that that is, yes, you have a problem. You can, you have to prognosticate, see to the future, and decide this is not where, this is not going to all go well for this country. What do I need to do across board? My education sector, my power sector, my 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 my, my, my electricity sector, my, my 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 oil and gas sector. What do I need to do to prepare this country for what is going to hit it in the next 20, 30, 40 years? Okay, so um, what are your thoughts quickly? Because we know that Nigeria uh, so far has been making plans, you know, to shift from the use of, you know, petrol to natural, I mean, clean gas or clean cooking gas as it is. What are your thoughts? Do you think that this is a step in the right direction and that we're, you know, moving towards 2050 where uh, some countries of the world have agreed to, you know, uh, keeping the environment and protecting the climate? Yeah, maybe maybe the short and medium term you can that 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 can make sense. By by short and medium term, I'm talking about 
the next 10, 15 years, yes, maybe maybe that can make sense. That can that can that can make a dent in it in terms of how much we were spending on, on, on petrol, for for example, as a country, diverting some of some of that into gas. I spent pretty much 10 years of my career as a gas man myself, so I understand how the gas space works. But 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 the key thing is going to be for, for you first to sit down and say exactly as I, as I said, you no know, begin to think. Stop thinking like like we will do in Nigeria in terms of five years or ten years or fifteen years. Start thinking like the Chinese, like like the Japanese. Fifty years, thirty years, forty years. What's going to happen? You are talking. You are saying this, my, my dear sister, because you still have cars. Europe is going to stop producing petrol or, or petrol or gas-based cars in another twenty years' time. So the cars coming in, in, into in, into Nigeria in twenty, thirty, forty years' time are not even going to have um, um, combustion engines. You get me. So, 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 so the so the key thing is good. As I said, this is a global thing. If they stop making petrol, petrol, diesel, gas cars in Europe, in the Americas, in China, in 20 years time, in the 25 years time, by 30 years time, the cars in Nigeria, because let's assume that they will start dumping all their all their petrol cars in Nigeria or the or the developing world. By 30 years time, they have dumped all those cars. The only cars you will have in Nigeria will have to be an EV, EV cars. Electronic cars. So that is where we are going. So whether we like it or not, the best you can do is to manage and wiggle and as um, one of our football coaches say, wumble and fumble and find our way to, 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 the, to, the, to the answer. But at the end of the day, we have to sit down and find the solution. Know that this is where the world is going and, let, and find a way to actually make ourselves competitive in the new world that is shaping up. But as much as, uh, you know, I would agree that it's important that we also uh, grapple and find a way as a country and also as a continent. But I'm also thinking that for the countries that are championing this cause of, you know, global energy transition, we would want also to agree that Africa and, you know, energy consumption is not at the same level. And even with the, you know, with the level of emission, I mean, you, we already know the countries that are actually uh, contributing to polluting the entire, you know, entire world or the entire space. But however, we will talk about the fact that globalization is what it is and it would get to every part of the world, wherever it is that we're faced with. But I'm also thinking that there should be some form of inclusiveness. You know, um, w these third world countries cannot be abandoned. They can't be left all by themselves. Uh, they need to be carried along, you know, with this particular agenda. You also see how some countries who have also not been able to ratify, I mean, some of these uh, oil producing countries, about four of them, Iran, you know, to that Paris Agreement. And so uh, you begin to ask yourself whether or not it's just or not just. I mean, the fact that you have some people agreeing and some people not really agreeing to this um, is there some level of fairness and equity despite the implication that it holds for the entire world? Again, as I've said, yes, I agree with you. Let, let, let me even start, start, start by, by agreeing. I agree with, with you that the global system as it is right now is the, the environmental problem we have to was caused primarily by the, by the Western countries, which basically used 200 years, more or less, of, of industrialization to actually pump all of these gases into the air and change the, the makeup of our, of our ecosystem. But the challenge still remains that whether you, you like it or not, the world to today is led by these countries. And so you can sit down and fight, which, I've said, which is what I've said, and use that blame game. At the end of the day, fairness is not when you get to the brass tax, when you get to where the decisions that affect tens of millions, billions of people uh, is concerned. Fairness is not an argument. I've been on those tables with me in, in the past. Fairness is not, this is fair, this is godly, this is unfair. It's not, it's not, you can, of course, they can show you one or two crumbs and say, okay, just take this, but give you an extra three years or four years or five years or whatever. But that three, four, five years will finish and you'll be back to, to, where, to, where, to where you started from. So we have to say that this is where the world is going. This is where the people who are pumping billions of dollars into our oil and gas sector, this is where they are moving their money. All the, all the major oil and gas companies are, are more or less, if you look at their plans for 2022, 20, 20, none of them had major plans for Nigeria. So we have to sit down and say the world is shifting as we are right now. And saying that, oh, it's not right, oh, it's not good, oh, God deal, it's not, an, it's not an answer. We have to sit down and say, yes, we can say that. I use that to get one or two, one or two advantages, minor advantages for ourselves. But the key thing for us is going to say, what can we do as a country? Because whether you like it or not, you are going to get to that place. Whether it's 10 years after, 20 years after, 15 years after, you are going to get to that point. 
So, so saying that, oh, you are not going to agree, because the, 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 the other key thing is that there are also a lot of other factors which many of these countries also have, because Nigeria is a lot more keyed into the global system. It's a lot more dependent upon the global system than many of these other countries are, that are, that, that are saying they are not part of it. We go to them for loans. They invest in our economy. So you cannot wake up and say you are not signing on to certain agreements. All right. It is in your own interest also. But you also, you also have to sit down and say, what can you do in your own country? To put your own house in order. Telling somebody that what is done is not fair, it doesn't make sense. They, but sit down and say, what, what, what do you need to do as a country to put your own house in order? That is the most important. If you are using any of our energy today, 95% of our energy should be focused on putting our own house in order. You use 5% to be, to be, to, to be asking for them to, to give us freebies or to give us analysis. All right. He's uh, an investment manager, all partnerships for energy access, uh, Afolabi Akin Rogunde. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing you. your thoughts with us this morning. Wish you a great Thank day. You very much. All right, uh, stay with us. Uh, the Auditor General of the Federation has, of course, declared that 178,000 plus weapons, AK 47s and the likes, have been declared missing and unaccounted for in the last uh, two, three years by the Nigerian police. And also, 3.22 billion naira worth of uh, ghost contracts were also given out that have no paperwork or confirmation of being, uh, uh, being done. These are some of the things that we're talking about next here on The Breakfast. Good morning. <laughs>